My next guest is a former Olympian and the author of the new book, Personal Next. Welcome to the show, Melinda Harrison. Hey, Melinda. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. You are a competitive swimmer. You were at the 1984 LA Olympics. What was it like? And walk us through your career as a swimmer. So um, my career as a swimmer, I'm a now a swimmer, and uh, it was a long time ago, but swimming and representing your country at the Olympics is just the most amazing experience. I was actually more prepared for the Olympic trials, trying to qualify for the Olympics, than actually how I competed. I was 18th at the Olympics in 84, which wasn't up to my potential, uh, but I still had the greatest memories of my experience as an Olympian. Yeah, and I personally think, based on my limited knowledge about your sport, that it is harder to make it onto the Olympic team than to medal at an actual Olympic, just because so many people go to the trial. What was that like? The trials were very tense. That's all I can say is you put yourself on the line. You're out there and you need to put yourself on the line and believe in your training, believe in what you've done and have the confidence that you can you can perform at that particular moment because it is a one and done situation for most athletes. If you don't make it then, then it's over. That's your yeah, you're done. For, for these athletes, they know, OK, the trial date is set. What are some routines they use to make sure that is the very day or week they peak? So lots of change since I, I swam, but it's certainly preparing for that peak experiences, you know, resting up and tapering, using the mental training that's going on. There's an immense amount of focus on preparing mentally as well as physically and then using your emotions to hype up enough, but not too much. Yeah. And then let's talk about the Tokyo Olympics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? Because it may not happen. Well, so my concern is always for the athlete. Um, that's the lane I'm in. I want what's best for the athlete. And I have great concern that it is not going to be a level playing field. For example, there are many swimmers out there that are unable to train right now. They're, they're doing dry land in their basements. And who knows what the athletes are doing in Russia? Who knows what the athletes are doing in China or anywhere else in the world? We don't know. And so if you bring all these athletes that are prepared together and with the ones that aren't prepared, you're not going to have a level playing field. And that's a real issue for me because I think our athletes have spent four years an Olympic, someone who is in the realm of qualifying for an Olympic team has a four-year cycle. And that is where their focus is, to, to peak at Olympic trials. And then for those that make the Olympic team, to peak again at the Olympics. Yeah, if I were an athlete right now, what do you suggest me doing? Should I train as if the games are proceeding as normal? Or should I train with this cloud hanging over my head thinking, oh, well, it may be all for nothing. So my recommendation based on my own experience is keep going, do whatever you can. And I'll tell you why. When I was competing in um, 1979, 1980, and we boycotted the Olympics then, and I was a senior in high school, and I went from training and total focus to enjoying myself those last two months before the Olympic trials. I didn't make the team in 1980. I didn't have that self-regulation to keep myself focused. When things are out of control, you need to figure out what you can control. And in this particular case, doing what you can to control your situation would be try and do as much as you can in the environment you have. Don't let athletes are naturally addictive. They need to be to keep going. So don't let addictive behavior, excessive video game playing, get in the way of your objective because you don't know it is out of your control whether they'll go with the Olympics or not. Yeah, you know, Melinda, you're not the first elite athlete who told me that exact thing. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Yeah.